Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today. The Drifters were the people that everybody loved to sing and dance to, and I'm delighted to say the star of the show. Ray Lewis joins us now to talk about a very exciting time for the music and, of course, for his tour, which is going across the UK. You can get tour dates at raylewismusic.com. How are you, Ray? Great, Alex. I'm just fantastic, man. Do you know, it's so good to talk to you. There aren't many legends left, but you're certainly one of them. Do you pinch yourself when you look at where you've been and what you've done? Well, i would be honest with you. I, I do look back and I'm just, I'm always on my knees and thanking the Lord for the fact that I'm still here mm. after the long terms and, and especially looking at the, you know, the way things have been over the last 10, 10 or 12 years or so. I've lost so many of my brothers, not just the guys that worked alongside me, but so many of the guys I've worked with over all the years, I like Whitney, uh, Luther Vandross, Prince, all these guys... Everybody's Michael, you know. It's just, it's just, it's just a strange time. So I'm praying that I can stick around and serve the people, you know, a little bit longer, for as long as I possibly can. I want to, I want to be out there. It's difficult, isn't it, to work out whether we should count our blessings that we're left with their music as their legacy forever, or whether we should be upset that we've lost what they may have done in the future, because you never know anybody's potential until they've done it. That's true. That's true. They didn't happen for them overnight. They didn't become that legend or that megastar of a night. So it was time. We fell in love with them and we grew with them, you know, and, 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 and drew from them on their mythical concepts and ideas, which is a great thing. Uh, I wouldn't say that we should be remorsed over the fact that, you know, that they're, that they're, that they're gone. We know that life says that that's going to happen. I think we just rejoice with what we have. Mm. We've got such memories with them. For those that have gone to see the artists, Memories, you know, kids have been born, marriages have been performed, uh, monumental events have taken place with somebody's music, and they remember that. And those memories will be there whether the person is or isn't. So, you know, we're just grateful for that, that they were here, they left their legacy. And, um, and uh, I mean, like, like my boys. I mean, Johnny Moore, was, he was an amazing voice. His voice was known all over the world as the lead singer of the Drifters. And... Uh, you know, I even, till this very day, I, I shudder to think about the time I first actually got to meet Johnny when I was signed with the group. And I was just in awe, in absolute awe of Johnny. You know, but not just Johnny, but so many of the other guys, the same thing. So, you know, these times and these moments, they won't last forever as far as the person, but the memory goes on and the music will last forever. We won't ever lose that. Mm. Do you still pinch yourself when you switch on the radio? Every day, the Drifter songs are being played, and there you are. Is that still weird? It, it's just strange, but I always equate it to a show. Every time I hear a song, say, for example, they play Saturday Night Movies, for whatever reason, um, we've had a nice, size catalog that just has had so many great number one hits, but we've had a lot of songs that we, we performed. And uh, when I hear a song, I think of where I was at the time I first did the song or we recorded the song, the events, more than anything. And I'm, I'm grateful and I'm so over the moon that they're still being played and they're still popular and the albums are still signed. So, yeah, I, I you know, I, I have to step back and think, how lucky am I? Mm. How blessed am I? I do. And we look at your style. Basically, you are a gospel singer that brings that to pop, aren't you? It's a very thin line between the two when you analyze it. Absolutely. You're so right, Alex. You're so right. I mean, that's that's what I operate from. I operate from that spiritual viewpoint. And when I perform or when I record or even in person, you know, that's how I see life. You know, I'm, I like to be real. This concept of being on a wall and stardom on the stage, as a matter of fact, I rarely, for those that come to see me, know that I rarely stay on the stage. I'm always in the audience. <laughs> yeah. When I see someone like you, I always think of sort of the Las Vegas showroom, and you're born to play those venues, aren't they? You are part of the audience. You're not singing at them. That's exactly right. Yeah, I, believe, I want to be a part of the audience. I want to be a part of the people. I'm not unapproachable. How tricky are these numbers? Because when you try and sing them at karaoke, they're very high, aren't they? Some of them are. <laughs> Some of them are very high. Very deceptive, actually. That's, you know, 10 out of 10. That's amazing. You would know that. You're absolutely right. Um, some of the some of the songs are pitched so very high because Johnny actually had a very high voice, like myself. You know, we both had very high. The top of our ranges were very very high, mm. and the songs were recorded up there. And back in the day, they were recorded even a little bit higher, slightly nudges higher than the vocals. 
So yeah, when you try and sing them, and you try, you think, well, why don't I sound like that? You mm. probably don't sound like that. It's just that you have to understand that the range is really high up. Mm. Which are the numbers that people really look forward to? I guess under the boardwalk, save the last dance up on the roof. Yeah. But Saturday Night at the Movies has got to be the big party song, hasn't it? It's massive. It's massive. The very second you put that one on, people come alive. It's the one from 8 to 80. Kissing in the back row of the movies, there goes my first love, up on the roof, under mm. the boardwalk. You know, Alex, we, um, we for many years, obviously before we came, because we're an American group, before we came to the UK, we were signed to uh, other labels uh, in the United States. And then we came and we signed with CBS Epic here, and we started working and performing and recording out of out of the UK uh, with CBS International. Mm. At the same time, we were on the same label at the same time with Michael was our last album. Last uh, last album we did with CBS was with the time of Michael. And uh, when we came here, we recorded so many songs. Once we started, uh, you know, they started picking up on the songs that we recorded here. Come on over to my place. Uh, more than a number, these sort of things that, that were recorded here went to number one here. They started going for the back catalog, as people do. They want to know more of what you've done. What else is out there available? And we did so many songs, so many albums, and great music in America. So we were massive in America with things that came here latently. They didn't come for a period of time. They weren't the first things here. Um, under the boardwalk, of course, the standard ones were, were here, and then they went. We reached out and recorded more. Uh, Carol King, Levin Stroller, uh, Cook Greenaway, we recorded There Goes My First Love, mm. Up on the Roof. These sort of things. And uh, they, they spread here. They, they grew. They became very popular here. And they're so, all so joyous. Um, Every single one of those songs you made were joyous. I mean, they were just filled with uplifting uh, positivity. Yeah. And I think that's, if not now, what we need more than ever. Back in the day, that's what people no. needed more than ever. That doesn't no, change. Yeah, no, we do. You're so right. Yes, we do. As I remember, you know what I'm saying, we were recording them. I loved the songs at the time. But they were always happy. Yeah, even till this very day. I think about that. You're, you're absolutely right there. Uplifting you, song. You have a soul in your voice that you can't buy. I wonder whether some of that came from the church, but also part of it came from the military, because when you see those things that you saw and you're part of that community, I wonder how that affected you and your sort of approach to life. Well, when I sing or when I perform, it isn't just a song. If I can say that, I'll honestly, and it sounds cliche, but it's true. It's not just a song. It's a uh, deliverance of the, the lyrics, you know, and, and trying to get people to perceive the understanding of that song. Like you say, you know, like we were saying, they're joyous songs, but there's no getting away from the influences that drive it, that motivate it. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a passionate singer and and it comes from my my experiences in life military was one of course uh being you know uh, growing up as a black kid in the ghetto you learn certain things and you become a certain way in understanding about deliverance of music obviously the church is the is the major driving force in most of our lives and certainly wasn't mine and and having that influence it kind of reflects it shows you can hear it in the timbre of a person's voice when the spirit and soul is there you don't have to be or you don't have to be a foreign to it to understand it. It comes to you quite quickly. You feel it. Mm. And then I look at some of the people you've met and worked with. You must pinch yourself when you're with people like Carol King. You mentioned Whitney, Diana Ross, McCartney, Lionel Richie. I mean, some of the greatest legends we've ever had yeah. on planet Earth. And you've got to know them and be part of their lives. How extraordinary. <laughs> I'm going to confess something now. that I, I listen, Alex, I'm only on your show I'm going to confess this. <laughs> At the time, when I first joined the group, I was the youngest lead singer ever in the group, which was a novel idea. To this very day, I'm not sure what motivated them to make that decision to hire me. Mm. You know, trying to replace someone like Johnny, how is that possible? It's not possible. But they had another idea in mind that if someone else coming into the group, I don't think anyone could ever truly have stood in Johnny's shoes, but they wanted something different and new. So they tried the baby idea, and I was the baby of the bunch, right? So everything to me was like a kid in a candy store. When I got the chance to meet all of the names, just as though a, 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 a person who has never been or introduced or met any celebrity at all, that's how I was. Mm. And I was there, I was signed, I was the lead singer of one of the world's largest groups, but I was just like a kid 
and the candy store. So meeting Diana Ross, uh, Luther, meeting all these other names of these people. I'm sitting there with my mouth wide open, and they're looking at me. And the funny thing about it is, is they're looking at me because I'm with a legendary group mm. that is the initiator of black soul music. So they're thinking, or you know, you would think that I would be the one to be the authority. But I'm looking at them thinking, wow, am I really here? Am I really here this evening? Am I actually partying with this person? Am I singing with this person? Mm. Uh, time and time again, I've said, imagine Sir Paul McCartney, amazing, getting a chance to record with him. You know, the list is endless. Yeah, it never gets old, amazing. does it? No. I, the stories, I could sit down and tell you stories all day long, make your hair stand up. I know. I can't imagine. That's Just to be you. Wonderful time. What a life. Um, you can find out more about the tour dates coming up at uh, the website, www.raylewismusic.com. Blackpool at Viva, a wonderful Vegas star club, December 1st to Manchester 2nd, 4th in Darlington, South Shields, 9th at the Roadhouse, Durham, Birmingham, Hoddesdon at Nana's Kitchen on the 18th of December with our friend Dean Martin there at 28th of January, Skegness, and February 11th at uh, Hailing Island as well. And you'll continue to tour through 2017 and I'm sure much further as well. I I wonder, as you mentioned about culture and how the past defines our future, where America stands now, are you glad to be in the UK? It seems post-Trump's election, it's a curious time over there. Alex, don't you dare cause me to disturb my country. <laughs> <laughs> Say something nice. California right now, uh, I'd be looking at 90 degrees. Yeah. In Florida right now, I'd be swimming in blue oceans, uh, you know, in the coast in the Alps. Uh, yeah, in Vegas, they've got an Eiffel Tower and uh, they've got the Luxor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, and by the way, we just had a presidential election. <laughs> we, just, we just had a presidential election. Uh, well, we, we live in very strange guess, times. Yeah, oh, my goodness. What, what, where are we going? You know, what, 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 what's it all coming to, really? How in the world can we honestly, you know, and I'm on this side of the world, so, I, you know, I just, I see the differences, you know, I, and I've lived here in the UK for so many years, in and out of the UK, so many, and I see the difference in the culture and the science, and I'm, I couldn't begin to tell you, you know, I love America, but I love here. I love being here. I am so much more comfortable here, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I understand things for the better. Listen, we all have political wars, don't we? You know, there's always something we're not happy about. Something. And I think we also have to remember that Brexit and Trump is sort of brought on by people's desperation and frustration. And we have to remember that not everybody's perhaps living as privileged life as we are. Sure, that's right. That's exactly right. Mm. Yeah. He's the face we have got to recognize and he's the face we've got to see. So out of all fairness, we have to do one thing now. We have no choice, both here and there. We have to allow him his time and space to prove himself, you know, to, uh, so, you know, if the policies that we, we would like to see implemented, we have to support them. Yep. You know, if there are policies that we don't or we can't, you know what I'm saying, obviously we have to voice that opinion. But if we know that, you know, there's little option, then, you know, we can't, we can't go to the streets with it. We have to try and abide by the, that rule, the parliamentary procedure of trying to be as diplomatic as we can and understanding that it's our okay. time will come if we want something to change. Mm -hmm. We can hold on. We wait and wait for that change. Very interesting times, but through every generation, through every crisis and war and depression, the one thing that's held us all yeah. together is music, and we thank the drifters and people like you thank for bringing that to us. You can see uh, Ray Lewis at uh, Blackpool's Viva on December the 1st, touring through 2017. You can find out more by going to the website, which is raylewismusic.com. How lovely to talk to you again. Thank you so much for your time, oh, Ray. It's been amazing, man. Thank you so very much for having me. Anytime. Would you please pass on my words to all your listeners? I, I absolutely, absolutely looking forward to seeing them all there. And for you, man, it's great. I hope to see you again soon, Alex. I hope to see you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, man. God bless, okay?